she would always say that I'll pick someone for you. And if you ever, I guess, find someone for yourself, I won't accept, especially if it's outside of the culture. So, my mom will eventually agree. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm not going to leave someone who's really good, a good Muslim, um, to agree okay. with my mom. It's like when your mom gives you an ultimatum. Yeah. Mom or a yeah. girl, a girl says but to you, your so, mom so or your or me. What are we? Are we Bengalis? Are we Bengali Muslims? Are yeah. we Muslims? Do you see? Exactly. So I, I make them think critically and then realize, you know what? We're actually following a lot of Hindu culture. So what my mom would say is, I gave birth to you and I raised you. So you have to marry. There, there is... I choose. And if you don't, then I don't accept. There's... The moment of Eid, when we're supposed to bow down and like touch her feet, we said, no, actually, I'm not going to do it. She got so offended. She got so, so offended. Who got offended? My mom. And I was, I'm looking to get married, basically. And so I went and, you know what he said to me? He goes, oh, no, this is only for uh, Mongolians. I spoke to my mom. Can I marry outside my yeah. ethnicity as yeah. long as they're Muslim? Mom said she'd prefer a Bengali girl purely because she can't speak English. Yeah, so speaking about emotional blackmail, speak about pressurizing, they will tell you, you get married again, you're going to be disowned. You rejected it because you're too concerned mm. about what others will think. It's, it's good mm. as seeing Allah mm. or the community. Community. I, I just don't believe that South Asian men have the ability to treat each wife equally. They just don't. 100%. What we go for is if the skin color. It's nothing to do racism. Whoever's the lightest, they like, get them. That, like, that's, 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 that's racism. I know, I know. But <laughs> that's the definition it, they of think, racism. They think he's actually in the wrong. Like, she wouldn't understand that. She would be like, just bear it, just tolerate it. Don't ever let it come to a point of like divorce because what are people going to say? Brothers and sisters, just imagine for a second that you give £10 in donation and that £10 is used to buy food or bricks or whatever to help the people in Gaza. But then just imagine this amazing deed that you want to do, but we turn it into a money-making machine. How? The waqf is exactly that. They take your money and the money that we are going to put in, in this waqf, this building, and every single time the money generated from that waqf, that building, is going to go to our Palestinian brothers and sisters for the next 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 100, 150 years. And this will be a form of true sadaqah jariya. I myself, We'll be donating for that, inshallah. Click the link below and donate. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless and preserve you guys. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, brothers and sisters and dear friends. Hope you guys are well, inshallah. Welcome to another episode of the Bitter Truth Show. Um, as you guys know, we're doing a cultural episode. Uh, we've had uh, the Somalis. Um, uh, may Allah bless them, inshallah. We've got to know a lot about the Somali culture, uh, from their weddings to the divorce to marital disputes. Uh, and we're doing the same thing, same format, same questions. And today we have our Bengali brothers and sisters. Um, the only thing I know is a balan. That's all I know. Balan. Bala, I see. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's it. That's all I know. Balan. What is it? Bala. Balan. What does that mean? That means I'm good. Um, oh, yeah. So if someone says balan to me, I say. <laughs> if someone says balan to me, what do I say? Bala, I see. Bala, I see. Bala, I see. Yeah, that means I'm good. Yeah. What if I say? What if I say bala bala? What does that mean? Good, 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 good. <laughs> and that's exactly I am good, inshallah. That, that doesn't make sense. Good, good. Me, I never make sense, anyways. <laughs> uh, so, guys, inshallah, before I start, I want to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most merciful, the most just, all praises, glory, and gratitude belong to Him. Um, we've done this ep episode uh, with the team, you know, we decided, and, uh, you know, with the co producer, which is my wife, mm -hmm. or, you know, she grooms me sometimes, but I think I deserve it. Uh, but yeah, before we do the culture episode, get to know different cultures. And yeah, if you're watching this, <clears throat> we want you guys to come as well if you're Nigerian, Congolese, Jamaican. English, Turkish, Kurdish, whatever, inshallah, please apply. It's not a debate. We're just here to just to get to know your coach in a nutshell. Uh, please tell us a bit about yourselves and then we'll get straight into the topic. I will ask the first question and let's see we will, what we're going to inshallah find out about the Bengali. I'm Saeed. I'm just a YouTuber. I uh, react to YouTube videos. That's it, really. Can you guys please speak to your mic loud? And I'm a property, uh, rent out properties. That's it. Mashallah. May Allah bless you, inshallah. Mm -hmm. Uh, my name is Mahdi. I'm a, I work in finance and uh, do a few side projects as well. All right, sisters. Uh, Asalaamu Alaikum. I'm Khan Uh I do YouTube on the side and talk about controversial topics. Asalaamu Alaikum. I'm Parveena. If you didn't know, I'm her sister. We're blood sisters. We don't look like alike. Actually, we don't look alike. We're sisters. And. Um, um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> do, you, do you study? Are you work, sister? Um, so currently I'm unemployed, but I'm working on a vision. That's it. Inshallah. 
Assalamu alaikum. My name is Halima Yasmin. I'm 26. And I'm an architectural design. Masha, may Allah bless our honorable sisters for being here and our honorable brothers. Uh, we're going to get straight into the topic. Uh, the first question we usually ask in these the topics as well, inshallah, is that <clears throat> I have some experience <clears throat> with the Bengali culture, a little bit. Uh, when I was looking to get married, there was a Bengali sister actually, I was saying to mark a marriage. Uh, that didn't work out. We'll come to that uh, to a bit later on about when it comes to marrying outside, uh, outside, inshallah. But um, the first topic is basically, as Bengalis, yeah, when it comes to seeking marriage. So, for example, you want to get married, yeah. How do you go about it? So, what does the culture say? Does it say that it's arranged marriage? We find someone for you. You can go find somebody, come and talk to us about it. Please tell me in a nutshell, in your culture, if you want to get married, how did, how did, how do you guys go about it? In a nutshell, if that hope that is that clear? Yeah. Yes. So let's start off with the sisters. If if you. Like. Yeah. Um. So I know culturally, like we obviously, uh, I guess the the groom com comes over to the the woman's house and asks for a hand in marriage, but like specifically speaking, in my house, my mom she wouldn't she would always say that I'll pick someone for you. Uh, and if you ever, I guess, find someone for yourself, I won't accept, especially if it's outside of the culture. As well, so. Okay, so so, would you say that, for example, it's mainly arranged marriage? Yeah, yeah. What I would add to that is, I feel like it's very different in every Bengali household. Um, we're not the same and we don't have the same parents. Um, so it really depends on like their mindset and uh, the mother, the family itself. So yeah. Single parent household, we don't have a father as well. So, um, so yeah, we don't really have a mahram so, so for someone to like come to. So it's a bit difficult so in that way. Yeah, to speak in a subjective way yeah. is if we, let's say I found someone from the African culture um, and I really like him. He's Muslim and he's practicing and everything. This is a bit controversial, mm -hmm. but I would, I would no matter what, I'd still go with that marriage. Mm -hmm. uh, my mom will eventually agree. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm not gonna leave someone who's really good, a good Muslim, um, to okay. agree with my mom. Yeah. Okay. So, my mom, she regardless, she wouldn't agree to any of them. Okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come to that uh, the marrying outside your culture. Yeah. We're gonna come to that. Okay. But when it comes to family, <laughs> like we can elaborate on that. No, 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 no. It is just. For example, as a young Bengali person who's looking to get married, does parents say, listen, don't be thinking that you're going to find somebody, etc. No, we are going to find someone. So is it like to you, you're like, okay, you know what? There's no point in me if I saw a brother that I like or whatever. Is, is it like from the get-go, like oh, what my mom says? Is that how it works? I just want to know. Uh, um, say something. So I think generally with like Bengali marriages, there's two approaches. There's the traditional approach and the modern approach. So the traditional approach is you tell your parents, I'm going, I want to get married. I'm old enough now, financially secure, etc. So at that point, your parents will most likely speak to their brothers, sisters, friends um, to find someone who could match what you're looking for. But I'd, I'd say more more often than not, there's the modern approach where people go and find their like spouses themselves. Mm -hmm. So through apps, meeting friends or friends. Mm -hmm. So there's there's two different approaches basically. Well, traditionally, they are saying that it's usually the moment you say, "Oh, what? I want to get married," your family uh, will tell you that we're going to look for you. Did, did, did they ask you what you're looking for? Did they come and say to you, like, what's your preference? Or did they say, listen, shut up. Um, we're going to find someone for you. How's it, I want to know how it work. <laughs> it depends on the family. Yeah, yeah. Because every house is not the same. 100%. Like, like my family, it was, we'll find someone, you know? And like UK girls are not good. And um, my mom thought, like, need someone from back home because either the, she's going to leave you eventually. It's like they know the future, you understand? So it has to be someone from back home. And then it, when your mom gives you an ultimatum, yeah, mom or a yeah. girl, a girl says but to you, your so, mom or so your or me, or because I'm the oldest in my family. So my mom wants me to stay with her. So she's so worried that she's going to be alone because my father recently died about six, seven months ago. My grandmother died. Ali, Ali knows this. She's mom's bit of, you know, can you say that? Yeah. yeah. You know, you know what it is, right? I'm not making excuses for Bengali parents acting mm. the way they do. 
but the way they were brought up, it's so toxic. They're more accepting of marriages because they don't have the benefit of choice like we do. Yeah. They understand they, they had marriages out of love. There's no love for the other person, right? They do it out of necessity to carry, you know, the family name yeah. or just to unite village, et cetera. There's so many yeah. things. So many- and also I was going to say, it's like, an, there's a, like a entitlement, like a, there's entitlement involved. So what my mom would say is I gave birth to you. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, and I raised you. So you have to marry. There, there is- I choose. And if you don't, then I don't accept. There's, there's emotional blackmailing. Yeah. 100%, there's a lot of it. It's like. I- I would and then say, they, they, and then it, there's like a lot of victim mentality as yeah. well. So they victimize themselves, and then you feel guilty. It's and, case by but case, you, though. But you want to it's, also be because at the end of the day, when you marry someone, you're going to be living with them, not your mom. Yeah, yeah. And you have to see that person every day. And if if you're not you're not happy with the choice, you're going to be miserable. And they don't understand that. They just want. It's also like a status thing as well. Uh, this is very thing, very yeah. much status driven. Mm. What are people going to say? Mm. But our, you know, the, the, the generation has to change that. How do you guys go about changing that? So you guys are the new generation. How do you guys go about, you know what? We need to put an end to this. But putting an end to this doesn't mean we are disobedient to our parents. Mm-hmm. Because it is, a, it is a sin. Do you get it? So we need to be very, very careful. These are, the, these are our, mother, our parents that brought us up. That doesn't mean they can do whatever they like with us. However... It has to be done in a certain conduct. Do you know what I'm trying to say? I, I understand what you're saying, um, but you know when you said being, I, I get what you're saying about dis- being disobedient to your parents is a sin. But if it's if it if it's disobedience against Allah, then mm. you know that you know it's just yeah. So if Islamically, I can marry someone outside of my culture as long as they are a good Muslim, good character, God, good con- uh, conduct then I don't see why I cannot marry this person just because they're not Bengali. With, with, with parents, there's a, there's a balance of disobedience and, you know, respect. Basically, she can't force you to marry someone you don't want her. Islamically, that's wrong. Yeah. There's no such thing that you can't force someone into marriage, right? Yeah. So I think with, with Bengali parents, you need to sort of put your foot down, right? You need to sort of stick up for yourself. Yeah. And as, as a man, right, they can't force you to marry who you don't want her. I, I think I'm learning that as well. Like I'm learning to be kind of stand my ground, but also like with a balance of like respect where I'm not c- crossing that boundary of where now I'm disrespecting my mom. Cause it's just learning that balance. And it, I'm not gonna lie, it was a struggle, but I found it eventually. Interesting. So, okay. So yes, Emma. Yeah. I was gonna say, um, I agree with what Brother Matty said. Um, case by case, it differs. And I think a lot of the discussion is gonna be that culture clashes with our deen basically. Mm. And to answer your question, I grew up in a cultural family. But Alhamdulillah, as I became practicing, I had to, through wisdom, uh, to, you know, educate my parents. It wasn't wisdom at first, as you know, when you get a bit zealous in the beginning, yes. you're a bit hardcore. Um, but then you realize that they've been conditioned in the way they grew up. Yes. And it's about understanding from their perspective, but at the same time, um, educating them and then making them understand. I look, Islam says this is wrong. And also ex- explain to them, look, if this marriage goes ahead and you're forcing me, if it doesn't work out, whose fault is it? Mm-hmm. Do you understand? And also another thing is, um, the Bengalis do is they have to marry in order of siblings. And again, that's changing now, alhamdulillah. Mm-hmm. But um, so if the eldest isn't married yet, mm-hmm. then the young person will probably have found a good prospect. That person has to wait. Um, it has to be in, in, in order. And alhamdulillah, recently um, one of my cousins broke that tradition. Right. It was good. So I think this is, uh, basically the, the dean saves us all, ultimately. Well, you know, when you bring the dean and you educate people. And for me, time and time again, I used to ask my parents, what are we? Are we Bengalis? Are we Bengali Muslims? Are yeah. we Muslims? Do you see? Exactly. So I, I make them think critically and then realize, you know what? We're actually following a lot of Hindu culture. Yeah. Not just Hindu culture. You know, Things um, like um, touching the feet on the okay. weddings. Yeah. yeah. Basically, um, you know how Why in the culture, you, 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 you go down, <laughs> sorry, on each day, oh we, used to, we used to go up to aunties, uncles, all the elders, we used to bow down and touch their say feet. salam three times. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 on their feet. Yeah, it's, yeah, no, no, yeah. No, 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 yeah. it's not the truth. You basically, you kneel you, you, down, yeah. you, you, go, you, you go down on your knees, yeah, and you have and your you hands like this, feet. touch their feet, salam three times. And only in the last 10 years, I'd say, Bengali size. Question, I say, what, what are we doing? Yeah, that's that's the truth. I, yeah. It's a Hindu thing, yeah. yeah. But just want to say really quickly, just on your point with um getting married in order, there is a reason for that. I'm not saying I agree with it, but women in Bengali culture they have an expiration date. They do. That's what that's what mm-hmm. Bengali people teach. 
Like, you know, when you get to 30, oh, but your kids, you know, you need to have kids before 25, before 30. That's when they try and marry them off, like, at a younger age. There's, like, an order for them. I'm not saying I agree at all. I'm just saying that's what the... Uh, yeah, sorry, guys. You can speak, just whisper. Because it pick up. Forgive me. You can speak. <laughs> she wanted to add yeah. something to, okay. you know, the bowing of the feet thing. Uh, yes. Know, so, um, yeah. Interestingly, I, I, I think me and my sister said that... Um, the moment of Eid when we're supposed to bow down and like touch her feet, we said, no, actually, I'm not going to do it. She got so offended. She got so, so offended. Um, Who got offended? My mom. mom. So we said, no. But you didn't do it to her. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. didn't do it. So we kind of broke out of it. Mm. Um, and her reaction, so wrong. her reaction kind of obviously, it makes sense, but she felt violated. She felt like we were disrespecting her yeah. by not touching her feet. So, so Islam. Uh, yeah, but it's like, you're like, down. Down. you know, yeah. You know what it is with 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 that though. We're like we couldn't explain that to her. Like oh, uh, like we don't want to do it. Like we didn't know that she was. Did like, Did you explain Islamically that it's incorrect? So what brother said? Oh, okay. I remember, yeah, and yeah, I did, yeah, I did say that to so, my mom. I said like the Islamic perspective. Yeah, why yeah. We shouldn't but okay. that's what it is. We need to start. You know, our parents because they're old fashioned, cultured from Bangladesh. We need to like engage them in an educational perspective. Tell them why it's wrong. Tell them why it's right. But I completely I, agree with you. Well, again, it's case by case. But for me, I can tell my parents. Alhamdulillah, I can tell them, like, mom, this is wrong. Like, you can't say this. Or you can't do this. She'll be like, okay, you know what? Like, I'll show her verse of the Quran, hadiths, reliable hadiths. And she'll understand. Well, I would so, say that I just have one, one yes. thing here. Like, um, this probably um, crosses over different cultures. Um, but I'm talking about this this mindset. Um, and I've seen it a lot. Where Bengalis have this mindset. Let's say... Um, there's, you know, a sister needs to get married, right? She may not be ready for marriage, like yeah. mentally, emotionally, um, all that kind of stuff. And a lot of parents have this mindset, marriage will fix her. So they basically throw in the deep end. Okay. And it's usually like sink or swim. And that again comes from the other generation. They had to sink or swim. Mm, Some yeah. of them made it, alhamdulillah, they basically empowered themselves. They was a good daughter-in-law. Mm. But what happens when they, they don't swim? They sink. The guy basically realizes, I married someone who's basically had trauma, hasn't healed, um, doesn't know the different kind of gender roles, and then ends up in, in, in divorce. But mm. this mindset needs to stop where marriage will fix her. And um, mm. uh, for example, my, which is my uh, situation, but uh, the person I married was, that was the first proposal. Mm. So I understand sometimes, okay, it's a good proposal, you want to get to go ahead, but then they don't think long term that this person, you can't just accept the first proposal. Like, So she didn't know like, She's going to get married or no discussion took place. Mm. And that is another issue where there's no communication with some parents and kids, children, but you sit them down and the whole thing about what you're looking for, are you, are you, are you ready to get, to get married? It's almost like you're, you're ready to get married. They, they assume. But I think it's that mindset that needs to change where, you know, um, they're not ready for marriage, but yeah, marriage will fix them kind of thing. It's a very mm. silly mindset. It's interesting. It's like, it's like we, they, they are thinking for you. We need to break the cycle. <clears throat> That's why we're here. Yeah, we're the children of these people. Yeah, they came to this. So when I say when you when you're talking about specifically breaking the cycle, we're talking specifically like, you know, each like before two people come together in marriage because we complete one another. We don't mm -hmm. like you're not my f entire happiness because then if you're relying uh, relying on that one person for your entire happiness, it's going to become very toxic. Like we rely, uh, you know, we, 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 you know, we are only supposed to rely on Allah. Nothing should come above Allah. But like, yeah. you know, um, but you know, with my brother, my oldest brother, he broke the cycle in our family, yeah. and Alhamdulillah, I have it so good. If I like someone out of my culture, I can I can get married to them easily because of my big brother. Because he married someone that he, he was fond of in university yeah. and mm. Alhamdulillah, he had to break that. But I remember how, you know, I don't want to name any names, but it was a toxic environment and it was very hard for him. Yeah, 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 yeah. So let's, let's, the let's dive, in, is, let's dive into that topic then. Since we're talking about getting married, let's dive into the topic of interracial marriages. Um, so, le, le, like, as far as I know, from my experience, because, um, like, when I was um, getting to, like, trying to get married, um, I can remember specifically, it's, it's actually in my marriage documentary, I talk about my journey. Yeah. And I, I mentioned this stuff. I just mentioned everything that I went through, literally. What I went through, I just mentioned how I dealt with it, how I felt. I can remember, um, I went to East London Mosque and I just, I'm not trying to blast East London Mosque. They do amazing, alhamdulillah. I love them. It's, you know, like the, the work they're doing for the community, the masjid, amazing. Um, someone told me that, uh, there, there's a marriage uh, on the, you know, when you go up, yeah, section upstairs. So I went, I was a new Muslim. I think it was 2000 and, 
2013 or 2014. So I went upstairs and I went into this room and then the brother was like, yeah, salam alaykum, salam alaykum. He thought I was in the wrong place. And I was, I'm looking to get married basically. And <laughs> I just wanted to, it could be, I think they had a um, list of people or something like that. So I went and you know what he said to me? <clears throat> he goes, oh no, this is only for uh, Mongolians. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm, 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 I'm not joking. Well, I, I went. I was sat there. He was looking. That's he, so crazy. Yeah, yeah. The, 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 he, he was. He seemed like a. He didn't seem like he was a brother who was like uh, born here, but he literally. Alright, said to me, "Ah, oh, we have here in Bengalis. We want to marry Bengalis." And in, and in my head, I was thinking, yes. I was. I don't. I didn't. I, I didn't know what to make out of it. But putting that aside, yeah, this is this is this is. Well, like this is what really happened. Yeah? And to me, I don't really. Like, I'm not really. I don't hold hostility. It's, it's, I'm like, okay, look, it's like that. But I can remember, like in certain instances, I think it was one or two occasions I was getting to know a Bengali sister for marriage. Um, one of them, it was very pleasant, like um, straight away said, you can speak to my dad. Uh, you know, it didn't work out, but one of them, there was, there was this issue where like, and it's, it's like, oh my gosh, you're gonna marry outside. He's not one of us. But like, they were so Im immersed in what the community would think. Yeah. Like, are people gonna yeah. say? Now this me, myself, like I look a little bit Asian, yeah? Okay, I think so. I look a bit Pakistani because of uh, my nose, yeah? Uh, probably. So the, the, the issue here is, uh, by the, and that's, there's nothing wrong with the nose in Marsh, alhamdulillah, yeah? Yes, uh, anyway, so the point is this, yeah? Is that I realized with the Pakistanis, it wasn't that bad. When I was getting to know Pakistanis this is for marriage, it wasn't that bad. Like, I was invited to the house, uh, I was spoke, I spoke like the father would be in, uh, in another room, you know, we'll be like, it was, but I found in the Bengalis that there's extreme level of like, bro, deep. And like, that's my experience. So how do you guys deal with this when it comes it, to interracial marriage? That's interesting. I was going to say, you know, I feel like the younger generation are like, but I, I see a lot, a lot more interracial like marriages like with Bengalis and other like races, but within the younger generation, yeah, I see yeah, a lot, definitely. especially on social media, you I, see it. A lot. I think, you know what it is with- Very normal. So it, like, it's interesting that he said that. So I yeah. just say something before I forget this. Yeah, go ahead. Can you bring it's, that closer? Yeah, it's, closer. it's the, the you know, when he said the um, Pakistan, uh, the house he went, how, when, and he was a bit better. There's Bengali families as well, will accept you. Of course. Do you understand? Yeah, yeah. It's just, it's just that family. What it is, in our culture, what they say is, like, just the other day, my auntie goes, I said, look, I've, um, I'm going to look outside the culture as well, mm. outside of Bengali. She goes, no, 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 don't. I heard a lot of cases, um, <laughs> uh, Bengali people marrying outside the culture and um, it breaking up. I said, auntie, I married into my culture. Look what happened. <laughs> no, but, but it's some, and she's, she's true, saying, though. oh, I know this person yeah, got married to this Moroccan situation. sister yeah, but, and uh, they're divorced now. This, that, so it will happen to me as well. Do you understand? But every, we all have different. But you know what it is. Different paths. It's, it's somewhat true, though. It's somewhat true. Like when like, no, no. As in a sense, where when you when you have two cultures. Oh, sorry. Do you want to do you want to finish what you're saying first? You go ahead. Go ahead. Use the I'll let you finish first. I don't want to use my knock yet. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to finish what you're saying? No, no. Go ahead. You do. Okay. Um, I was gonna say when you have two cultures merging, it's really difficult to like maintain one. You know, both at the same level. Yeah. So I think parents often think, oh, like. You know, remember I told you earlier, I was like, I spoke to my mom, can I marry outside my yeah. ethnicity as yeah. long as they're Muslim? Mom said she'd prefer a Bengali girl purely because she can't speak English uh, yeah, and yeah, it's yeah. easier to like uh, relate connect. to someone, yeah, connect the, yeah. everything. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, I don't I think it comes from a racist point as much as it did before. Yeah, but there is, as you said before, there is color. I can also well. say like sometimes there's, we can get, there's, there's two extremes. So some people have the mindset, they want to marry a sort of Bengali culture just to prove a point. That's yeah, also wrong. Yeah. And I agree with what the math is, uh, said, basically, like, even scholars say, if you can marry within your, your qawm, your tribe, just for compatibility, mm. that's preference. But to prove a point, and I get it, it's all nice, you know, interracial marriages, but you've got to think about everything, not just to prove a point. And alhamdulillah, say, within my family, I've got, you know, people who aren't married, Pakistanis, reverts, um, but, like, it will change slowly. But at the same time, it's not, nothing wrong with marrying from your own kind of culture. Of course, like, um, to me, marriage is about two, two families, don't forget. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. You're, you're marrying into the, the two yeah. families. The thing is, preference is okay. Yeah. Like someone can say, I prefer. Yeah. The issue here is though, I, I, I didn't sense preference. It was more like, mm -hmm. like this is from the dean. Like, yeah. no, you cannot. It's like it's haram. Yeah. And that is where the problem arises. And this happened, this, it wasn't just the Bengalis. Mm -hmm. It happened to me with the Somalis. It happened to me with the Eritrean. So the thing is here is that it's, it's a form of, I don't know if I can say racism, but this is what's wrong. Somebody can say, I prefer that my daughter marries or my son marries. Huh? Preference is fine, but the moment you start blackmailing, the moment you start saying, what's people going to say, etc. Allah? Have you ever thought 
What's Allah going to say? Like, I see with a lot of these issues, people are more concerned about what people will say rather than what Allah would say. Yeah, well, and this leads yeah. people to, oh, people commit zina, bro. There's no excuse for it. By the way, there's no excuse. Nobody can make an excuse like, oh, my parents, there's zero excuses. Because I've been in situations where it's gone peak as a young man in this, living in this country, bro. But zina is never an option. Do you get what I'm trying to say? So people shouldn't make an excuse and be like, oh, yeah, I went to my parents and they said no. So um, I'm going to go. No, 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 no. There is no excuse. But we need to understand that at the end of the day, that preference is fine but bro, outright race or outright yeah they're gonna think have you ever thought what what are you gonna question allah for stopping your daughter to marry a black brother a white brother whatever brother it may be as long as he's practicing what are you gonna say to allah on day of judgment yeah. when if she ends up falling yeah. and all because of what what's my culture gonna think <clears throat> and i have heard of a story i don't know exactly where it was from but there was a black black brother who proposed to him i don't know if it was Bengali or pakistani in the asian i don't know and they rejected it. They rejected him because he is black. Yeah. And w this is a story that's been told to me. Yeah. Is that she ended up falling. It didn't happen with him. She ended up committing zina with a non-Muslim man and became pregnant. And to me, it's like, you know what? I'm so sorry. You deserve that. It might sound harsh. You have rejected what Allah has stipulated. Like the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, if a righteous man comes to ask for your daughter's hand, and if you reject it, there'll be fitna in the land. land. Yeah. So the problem is what? You rejected it because you're too concerned mm -hmm. about what others will think. It's, it's good mm -hmm. to say, Allah mm -hmm. or the community? Community. Aki, I'm not. Well, 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 so, do you get what I'm trying to say? Yeah, I was one one say, thing I would say, I think everyone will hate this word for passion, is this term called manchikita huibu. Yeah, man. man, man what's, what's someone else going to say? Well, 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 same thing. Basically, yeah. it's, it means what would the people say? How would you, how do you change that to what would Allah say? Um, I, 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 I like, I like it. That's, That's the one we need to do exactly. from now. Yeah. So, what's the yeah. Allah? Allah kita khoiba. Allah kita khoiba. Well, I need to say that Allah kita kita khoiba. Allah kita khoiba. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't know said it. <laughs> can I add to what you just said? You don't have a long beard. You don't have a thobe. You're not a scholar. What would you do? Brother, I just wanted to add to what you were saying. What were you talking about? Oh, that interracial marriages, uh, racism, what people would say. You know, I, uh, yeah, I was going to say, you know, that's largely to do with the fact that, um, like, our parents grew up in a very, obviously, cultural, like, background. But I feel like they don't know who God is. They don't know who Allah is. Because, for example, my mom, like, she reads the Quran, but she doesn't know anything. Uh, uh, she doesn't know the English translation. She doesn't know the translation uh, of what Allah is basically trying to tell us in the Quran. So how, uh, it's, it's going to be really hard for them to like break out of that mindset if they don't know who Allah is. Uh, and they won't be conscious of Allah when they're making these decisions or when they're stopping their kids from making these decisions. But you, you can break that. You need to like... 100% but you know I you feel like to educate her. 100% but you because know with, you my mom, with my mom it's a little bit different because no, she's like... she's. So, some people won't want to be educated, like, that's the problem. No. There's a lot of stubborn. It, it's hard though. I get what you're saying. You know, you know I've heard of this. I, says, I, get, I get what you're saying, but <laughs> I, I do my mom. My, I was going to say with my mom, it turns it's into loud, like a yeah. massive okay, argument. Guys, uh, uh, Mahdi has one and a half minute to speak without being interrupted, yeah? Okay. Uh, a whole minute and a half, starting now. Now, I was just going to say, with like, with Bengali parents as well, it can be really difficult to educate them. Imagine you're telling your dad, a 50, 60 year old man, now nah, dad, what you're doing is wrong. He's going to think, who are you to tell me what I'm doing? I'll be doing it my whole life. You're 20, what are you talking about? Do you know what I mean? It's so hard to educate your parents. Again, case by case basis. Alhamdulillah, my parents are easy to talk to, but I know a lot of other parents aren't, right? So it's just, it's really tricky to get through to them. Even if you show them evidence, you know, material from the Quran, from the Hadiths, it's very, very tricky. They're, they're so like stubborn in the head. They don't want to like understand that they're in the wrong. Yeah. But what you're right, once you've broken that, then they'll start realizing, oh, maybe I've been doing it wrong. Maybe I've not been, you know, um, faithful to the Quran, for example, or, or religion. But it, it takes a lot of effort to do that. I've seen so many situations where Bengali children were kicked out of the houses, where they've been threatened physically and mentally. Do you know what I mean? So it's very, you sort of have to balance it. You don't know where you are in terms of talking to parents. I understand what you're saying. So, uh, I'm done with it. So I'm going to ask you a question. Are you Muslim? Yeah. Yeah. So you have to. You have to educate your parents, no matter if they don't want to hear it. You have to be consistent yeah. with it. So, inshallah, one day Allah Allah will open their heart and they will realize. Mm. You have to be consistent. At, at the point of what 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 if there's physical abuse involved? Yeah. You're still supposed to tell them after you get physically. I, I agree with what you're saying, hundred percent. Yeah. The physical abuse. Why? What I would say is, at the end of the day, 
mental health is a very important thing. Yeah. And we've got young kids in the, in the house and you, it's, it's difficult for them to watch you and the, the mom arguing. And that's going to be traumatic for them. Yes. And, don't do that but you don't child. But but you don't know that you don't know it can heat up and why if it turns into physical stubborn. violence. Then I would I, then I would stop speaking. I would be quite mindful of a child being in the room whilst I'm trying to educate my mum that doesn't know anything. You can be mindful, but what if like maybe it's person- not a child? Maybe it's just your siblings. The worst people to a- give that is to your parents. You're not going to try. Oh the it, worst, it, hardest people, not the worst. Sorry, it is. It is. It's the hardest. It is. It is hard. But like, like I think uh, was in it? This is, life, is, are you not going to try? Yeah, it's Helim. You know. I hear you. You know, you know what it is. It is a fi- fine line because here we don't we don't want it to turn into where we are p- kids. We're watching this and be like, yeah, I can see this. You cannot. You, there has to be obedience to your mum and father. <laughs> but obviously, not at the cost of them telling you to do something against your religion. Mm. I think you need to deal with it in a certain way. Like you need to understand. I come from a river family, and my dad is hostile. Like I talk about this, and I don't believe my dad is malicious. I don't believe my dad hates me. My dad just wants the best for me, and he he fears that this religion is whatever, whatever for that matter. Even with my dad, and you need to understand, yeah, you guys are talking about interracial marriages. I get attacked for praying salah. I have to tiptoe to do wudu. So the thing is here is like, I ask a question. Like my mom even asked my dad when he would like, you know, have a go at me. And he would like, what, what's this guy doing to you? He, he just wants to pray. Like, but the, the point is this. To me, I'll be like, come on, like, I'm absolutely like, what am I doing so bad to you? But the point is, <clears throat> you need to understand there's a way and conduct of dealing with this kind of stuff. Um, and and to me, when I was in these situations where, let's say I was getting to know a sister for marriage and she said, my family doesn't want it. I would say, look, listen, there's two options here because at the end of the day, the families are marrying. Did you get it? I don't want to be hostile with my in-laws. So I would say, listen, try to be gentle. Try to yeah. speak. And let me be honest, my dad would cuss me sometimes over like Islam. And sometimes bro, I would go and kiss him on the head, yeah? Bro, I've never seen him so disarmed in my Kill life. Him with kindness. Exactly. I've never seen my dad so disarmed when he would cuss me out, you know, he would he would he'd be he'd be watching bin Laden and he'd be like, Yeah, hey, come come, your friends here. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's what he's saying to me. He's like, he's like, come come, look, he's like your friends on TV, yeah. So and to me, like I would show I want went to him and just kissed him on the head and said, Look, crazy. I said, Dad, you know, like I said, I love you regardless. And I've never seen him so disarmed in my life. So there's a way of going about it. We don't want to be Rebellion, rebel, uh, because at the end of the day, you need to understand it is important. Like they are our gender, so it's a very thin line. So I'm not trying to encourage anyone here to go on a mad one with their parents. Are like, yeah, I wish I did that with Mr. Trisha. Please, well, there has to be utmost respect to parents. There has to be a way of dealing with it. And number three, for Allah, all things are possible. Yes. Mm. Yes, Absolutely. this is a test and ask Allah to help you. Allah can change their heart. Yeah, so I'm saying there's a way of dealing with it, and I agree that to a certain point. But yes, if it is that you are now being blackmailed, you are being threatened, you've been kicked out. This is Zoom now. And even then, a certain manner, but again, there, it gives no right to anybody to raise their voice to their parents. It gives no right for you to be disrespectful. You can communicate and say, mom, that is wrong. Or dad, that is wrong. So I would say do that. Any other points? Because I'm going to go to the point of marriage. I want to know how you guys do your weddings. After yeah, just, just quickly, there are also parents out there where if you, I know you're very passionate about this topic, uh, if you want to take on a second wife, they'll disown you. Yeah. Well, we're going to come to that topic. Don't worry, I got to, I'm, I'm Mr. Yeah. Polygamy, man. Yeah. I'm Mr. So, Polygamy. Yeah, so we're going to no, no, come to polygamy no, in the Bengali so, culture. So speaking about, uh, emo- yeah, speaking about emotional blackmail, speak about mm-hmm. pressurizing, they will tell you, you get married again, you're going to be disowned. Don't, don't ca- care, bro. As, as long as Allah owns me, bro. Wallahi, uksum bin yeah. I will stand in front of Allah and say, oh Allah, did I commit haram? No. I don't care if the entire globe disowns and me. I would, say, I would say, this is what one, yeah. one, one scholar said as well, yeah, is even like a uh, topic like this, when you speak to your parents, maybe best not engage with them because they, because of you as a means, they might say a uh, similar kufr. They might say like, oh, I don't agree with it. So don't even entertain a conversation with exactly. your parents. Because like Ali yeah. Radulam said, don't tell the people what they're not ready to hear. Yeah. You want them to disbelieve in Allah and his messenger. Yeah. So we have to be careful. Yeah. But this issue of like, since you've opened this issue of polygamy, yeah, the guys, I didn't open it, he opened it, yeah. I'm just here entertaining it. Um, how do you guys, how do the Bengali culture deal with polygamy? So you're saying basically for you guys, it's outright, yeah, yeah. We, just, we know, we know, we know for the sisters, it's, yeah, but. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know anybody in my family that's, been in that situation I think and it's frowned it? upon because like um, like uh, my I guess my dad he got like a second wife but the problem is he even though he got a second wife back home he neglected his first wife yeah. and yeah. his kids yeah. and that was the, the yeah. and I, I understand why my mom would get resentment out of that why she would view like um, like having multiple wives yeah. as a like a negative thing because you you got another wife but you neglected 
me yeah. and my kids. I, th- I think um, so in, in our culture, in this culture, in this country, sorry, it's not. I don't know anyone, any uncles or anything. I've married like multiple women, but in Bangladesh, they, I'd say you see it around every now and then. But it's not maybe like you know high, but it's still more common than it is here. It's probably, and, it's probably secret second wife. It is, yeah, it, secret, it usually third is. or fourth. Kid, you know. Oh. But I was gonna say, you know, you know, with like getting a second or third wife, I I just don't believe that South Asian men have the ability to treat each wife equally. equally. They just don't. 100%. They just That's because true. because, because why, why do you say that? Why? Because I think men will. We go a lot of looks, right? We go a lot of looks. So if we have if we have two women, and we see one's prettier than the other, one's doing something better than the other, we're gonna value that woman over the other one. I just think South uh, Asian men, they, they just don't have don't the help. mindset. Yeah. But Islam, Islam gives a stipulation though, because at the end of the day, there's a hadith of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said that if a man has two wives and he inclines one towards the other, he will come on the day of judgment, his body leaning on one side. Mm-hmm. Uh, and to do zulm on someone, oppression, it's, it's a big, it's, 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 it's going to be accounted for. Uh, so men have to be very, they need to understand mm-hmm. jobs aside, mm-hmm. is that to oppress, like, you, just going to a different topic, I don't want to go personal with, yeah. your, with your father, is that if, if this was to happen, there's going to be accountability. Because at the end of the day, you know, you have to give the rights. You know, that's the reason why, if you think about it, I always say this, polygamy was sent down to protect your rights. I, because as men, we are prone to polygamy, and men usually do it by side chicks, mistresses, and girlfriends. So Islam allowed polygamy, so when it is going to be done, it's not done in the, at the cost of the second and third wife being used and abused. So Islam sends these protocols to say, if you're going to do it, you have to do it the right way. You speak to the father, you get married, you do a walima, you look after her, you provide for her. So when a man looks at the, he's looking at this and thinking, I have to do all of that? I've changed my mind. Do you see how it protects you? And do you get what I'm trying to say? So if you look at polygamy, even though women hate it, it's actually sent down to protect you guys because, you know, you guys are hypergamous by nature. And I'll be honest with you, I've seen this phenomenon where a lot of women will be like, if they're the first wife, over their dead body, you get a second wife. By the way, I'm not against... No, 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 not that I'm saying you are. Not that I'm saying you are. But when they don't mind being a second wife. Yeah. I, I've seen this, bro. It's, it's, you see it, can like, you, you know... Wait, sorry, can you just clarify yeah. the hadith you mentioned? If your heart is inclined towards one, you won't be simple. It's a bit equality. If you're not equal... Yeah, yes, yes. No, yeah. It's, 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 but, yes. Yeah, but if is your heart just... is inclined to one wife than the other, then you won't, you won't be held accountable. Because no, of course you can never. Because Allah says in the Quran, you can never be just. Yeah, exactly. We talk about justice. Look, it can like we're talking about looking. It might be in his heart that he has a specific liking to the other one. You, you don't need to tell the other one about that. It's between you and her. You get it. <laughs> but to mistreat and favor and oh, this is no hikmah, brother. Oh, my first wife done this or. This is, this is ridiculous. Like, you need to understand a woman's emotions, have some emotional intelligence. Uh, that's very but key as well. You know, uh, you know, Brother Ali Dawa, I've seen you sp- speak a lot about polygamy and there's nothing wrong with it. I see a lot of wisdom and, and hikmah behind it. But the thing is, the type of, like, there's a lot of men out there who are not equipped. No, mm. I'm not even talking financially. I'm talking mentally. Mentally, emotionally. Like, their emotion is especially emotional. emotional they don't intelligence, understand yeah. how, um, how a woman's emotion mm. works. Like, if a woman is getting emotional and you're getting upset at her, yeah, rather yeah. than trying to understand her, trying to calm the mm. situation. You know the saying, if one person is fired, the other person needs to be calm, water. Yeah. But you're, 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 like, doubling up on the fire. Yeah. yeah. Then, like, most, I feel like most of them, like don't understand that. So if a woman is getting emotional, they'll, they'll get, you know, they'll get emotional. This is, well. this, what you said here is hak sister. It's, it's very, it's so fundamental. Mm-hmm. It, it, it reminds me when a woman came and at the time Umar ibn Khattab and Umar ibn Khattab was saying, you know, why are the woman asking for high mahad? And Umar, and the woman came and said, basically, you know, this, Allah has given us the hak. And Umar ibn Khattab said, the woman is right and um, I am wrong. And I'm saying the same thing here, sister, you're right. Uh, and if I've, I don't think I've said that, but in this matter, I'll be wrong if I've, if I've said that. You're very true because at the end of the day, we as men, we have, if we're leaders, we cannot be emotional like you. We need to understand you. And a lot of men are not equipped with this knowledge. Do you get yeah. it? Oh, why are you getting upset? If she's, going to get, she's going to get upset. The best of the woman, Aisha, the Anna, has smashed the plate. Exactly. Just imagine, bro, you're chilling with your boys. Yeah? yeah? Your wife comes and smashes the plate in front of everyone. Bro, your ego will be so hurt. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he didn't even get angry. You know what he said? He said, your mother got upset and smiled. Which man can do that, bro? So you need to be equipped with that. Uh, but if, you, if there is a man like that, in, in, like if he's married to a Bengali, if there is a man like that, are you willing to accept that? Because a lot of people come and say, oh, if he's like this, but believe me, when that man comes along, they're still not happy. Like what? Sorry. Like the way you said, he's got emotional intelligence, financially can provide. I'll be okay with it. Like if you- Are you sure, sister? Because, because we will not be-, will not be... There's men like that right now. Because oh. okay. you know, some people contact me. Some let people, me, let yeah, me yeah, say, sister, like yeah. I- you know, it's something that I never really agreed with because I, I never understood it. Because I like every time someone would mention it, I had f- have this feeling in me like a like like I don't like that feeling. Uh, but then I I guess one day Allah gave me the wisdom and I 
deeply thought about it and I thought about how Allah created the men and how Allah created the women, how men, uh, you know, they're able to impregnate women like multiple times, you know, throughout the year, whereas a woman can only get pregnant once a year, you know, the biology and everything. Mm -hmm. And and, I, and then I understood like this is and then Allah saying like like women are actually a fitna like not a fitna like a struggle what do you, what do you call it yeah like it's a struggle a fitna for, for men, men. yeah they're, they're, yeah. the yes. biggest weakness yes. the and Allah like Allah is saying mm. that like that your biggest weakness is women regardless of whether you're married or not so I really thought about then I contemplated on it and I was like so if Allah is telling me that then and I don't I don't know because I don't we think so differently like as a man you think differently I think so differently uh, so I understood that and I thought. There's hikmah behind it, there's, and this this is probably most likely an actual need, like for men to uh, to be married to to more than one wife. And, you know, there's a lot of men also who are uh, okay with like having one wife, but there's uh, I would say every, uh, uh, well, majority man, majority yeah. man. I challenge, I challenge any man to come here and tell me that they're not. Any, majority any man would actually, 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 okay, okay, we've got to challenge it. You so, know, you so, know things like that. Yeah. I, no, I personally, I can't do, I can't do with more than one wife. I, I, do you know what I mean? If I get married once, I'm not. Exceptions okay. don't make the rules. My brother, my brother Matthew. Ali, stop trying to convince him. My brother Matthew. <laughs> 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 stop it. Okay, 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 okay. My brother Matthew, tell me, tell me what you just said. <laughs> I said I couldn't deal with having more than one wife. Okay, you said, you said you cannot deal. Okay, why are you saying deal? Because I just don't think I love the emotional capacity to deal okay. with more than, okay. my, my emotions, then I won't be ready for it. Okay. Mahdi, I love you for the sake of Allah, yeah? I'm going to give you a scenario. There are two sisters. I don't know what your type is, by the way, yeah? So keep it in your head. Women. Yeah, yeah, yeah we know, but there's, there's one specific woman. Yeah, there's, there's different kind of women, yeah? So imagine in your head, yeah, you've got two beautiful women, a uh, woman of taqwa, praise, good woman. They both come to you and say, we would like you to marry us. Islamic, yeah, etc. And they are both very attractive, but a woman of taqwa, practicing, etc. Can you tell me why you would reject one of them? I just, I just want to, but... but Genuinely asking, I don't want to make a point here, I don't want to make an ego thing. Mm. Genuinely, I'm just asking you because what happens is when you come and say this, sisters are watching this and go to their husband, see, there is one guy out there. Now, if there are two beautiful women, I look, I'm a married man. Mm. My wife is a co-producer of this. I talk about polygamy all day. Mm. Some of them are nice men in the house. I have to dodge, yeah? Okay, my life might be at risk. But the point is what? That I have to be honest with myself. So, two beautiful women, bro, why would you say no to one? So when you say two beautiful women, they're exactly the same, everything, right? Okay, but there's between, if I see two beautiful women here now, there's going to be some sort of difference. Well, I'll think the other one's better than the other. I'll go with that one then. No, no, that's fine. But I'm saying to you that if the other one doesn't have a great deficiency, I'm, to, I'm not talking about someone you have a liking of. Yeah, yeah. As a man, as a man, what would your heart say? They both agree with each other. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and they're both fine. There's they're no both headache. Fine. Because there's Marry no headache. You. If both of them... Um, woman of taqwa. Why would you say? What would you, as a human, as a man, what would go through your mind? Would you not be like to have both of them in my life? Hell yeah. Why would you say hell no? I've just told you about the emotional intelligence. I couldn't handle it. What this well, sister said. What? what this sister said about having the emotional like ability yeah. to put up with like, arguments and stuff, being the calm one. I wouldn't have that for two people. I can't do it. Okay, what's going to be mentally? Great. So what, 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 what if those two sisters say we swear by Allah, yeah, get yeah. witnesses, sign a contract, we're not giving you an emotional headache, we'll, we'll, we'll be chilled out. That's not realistic, though. No. If, okay. if that was the case, just speak the truth. Speak the truth. Speak the truth. You know, are you specifically talking? I can't imagine myself. No, okay. You know, one, one, second, one, second, one second, this is very important, bro. Because anytime brothers mentions, they mention headaches, the first wife would say, put those, all those uh, factors to a side. As a man, you would want more than one woman. Any man, unless he's, um, you know, uh, you know what I'm saying. But, but what I'm saying is, like, in a nutshell, that you will have the innate desire. We're born like that. You get what I'm trying to say? That innate desire, right? So... I know you're for, like, um, say, marrying multiple women. I know Islam, Islam says that as well. But what I'm saying is, like, I think, I haven't done a lot of research on this, but I think it's more appropriate at the time of when there was war, when the Sahaba. Uh, right now, I don't, I don't think, I don't You're think not getting the point, South Asian men. No, but that's what I'm saying. No, no, Let me get to the South point. Asian men. I'm talking to men. It's a specific okay. scenario. No, but I am a South yeah. Asian yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no I, I understand. That's what I'm saying. But, but I don't, but we can't generalize all of them. Mm. What I'm saying is though, no man would say no. Put the headache to the side. In no man in his right mind would say no to two beautiful women. Why would I say no to two beautiful women and I'm born and I have the, incline, the propensity to be polygamous and they have the propensity where they're hypergamous by nature. You're a handsome brother, yeah? Mashallah. So I'm saying, bro, no, 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 let's be honest, yeah? It's, and the women, they don't mind sharing. 
I'll be honest with you. And, and this, there's factors to it. So why would you say no to tuning? No headaches involved. All right, so there were no headaches involved. No. Welcome to, welcome to, may Allah bless you, inshallah. <laughs> okay, the point, the point I'm just saying is this, yeah. We are hardwired and, and it's the headache factor, because a lot of brothers say, oh, if my first wife didn't give a headache. So you would, but what puts you off is the first wife. That's but listen, listen to you. Listen to what you just said. Yeah, it's about it's about the emotional intelligence. That's what men are lacking. I, I believe in polygamy. I think it's a beautiful thing, and I think if you can treat each wife the same, you can't. Allah says in the Quran, you can, and you can you never be just if you try. Try to, try, right? Try, you have to try to. So if you can try to, Alhamdulillah, we'll have a better generation. A better uh, I was society. gonna. I, I'm just curious. But it's the, We're gonna it's the lacking of emotional intelligence. Yes, quickly, life. sister, because I don't want to make it. A whole okay, I was, I was gonna say. I'm just curious. You know, uh, you know the polygamy thing. You're saying every man is driven uh, to want more than one woman. Yeah, propensity. Okay, I get that. Um, is, what are they driven by? Are they driven by intim the idea of intimacy? It can, it can, it can, it can be intimacy. What is in, it? In, in, in Islam, I'm you, just curious. Okay, okay. Okay. To, it's, 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 it's like this. It's, to me. Look, in Islam, yeah, look, at the end of the day, like you said, there's many factors to this, yeah? There are more women than men, yeah? Uh, more men are in prison, more men die. So there's so many factors. Let's take yeah. one hand as well. And not only that, though, for a man, he could, he could be married. And this is where we don't understand. For you guys, the moment you fall out, fall out of love with your husband, you do not want to stay with him and want to divorce and move on, yeah? yeah. We don't think like you. Yeah. For us, it's like this. I love my wife. We love our wives. We have no problem. And I've said this before. If you have a lie to take the test, and they said to me, do you love your wife? I'll say, yes. They'll say, pass. Would you die for her? Yes, pass. Do you want a second wife? Yes, pass. This is that. where you guys don't understand us because no, for I, us, I, I, because I you think, that. You, you guys think. I get that. No, no, okay. You I, would stay, I would stay with my husband even if I fall <laughs> but out. You okay, both, good, Masha, but that's, that's a sacrifice, yeah? that's what I've been taught by my ancestors. That's good, sister. But, that's good. But what I'm saying is, the reason I say this, by the way, is because I see so many brothers who are going through oppression. They don't see their kids. They've been oppressed. They've been accused of all sorts because their honorable husband has gone and do it the right way. That's why I'm so obsessed about religion. It's not because Ali is obsessed. That's a private matter between me and my wife. Did you get it? Nothing to do with anybody. The reason why I'm so adamantly speaking about this over and over again, yeah. because if you knew the stories that I know of good brothers who want to get married again, all hell breaks loose. The point I'm saying is this though, it's not personal and we don't do it because we, we want to hurt our wives, but we, we are programmed in a way that we could love our wives and want another woman. It does not mean we don't love them. You guys don't think like that, but we do. Anyways, we can we need to move on because I don't want to make a political yeah, political discussion. Can you guys tell me a bit about the Bengali wedding? So, for example, how does it work? I know you guys are on this Ferrari, Bentleys, and all kind of stuff going yeah. around. Can you tell me? Is this a part of the Bengali culture? Uh, but the thing is, how do your weddings go? How many weddings do you have? Henna night. Uh, imagine. So, can you guys run me through? Two people have met. Say something. Two two yeah. people have met. Yeah. Um, and how does it initiated? Who comes to whose house? Yeah. 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 Yeah, before before we get to that, you can start that off. Yeah. I want to take you a little bit back. Uh, I know Bengali culture, there's one thing we missed out. What it is, uh, what we go for is if the skin color, it's not, it's nothing to do with racism. Whoever's the lightest, they get the lightest. I know, I know, but <laughs> That's the definition it, they, of think, they think, they think it's not racism. So, yeah. you know, that it's nothing to do with Africa or anything like that. If you're Bengali and you're dark skinned, they'll say, oh, she's too dark. No, one, she's no one. You understand? This is a big, big <laughs> issue in our culture. <laughs> but, but that comes from like, if you're Bengali, you're Muslim, you're mm. from the same village and you're dark, mm. she will have low chances of getting married. Yeah. Oh, she's dark. Oh my she's God. too dark. It's basically the same as saying like, oh, this she's a slave girl. This is a big she's problem like in black, our you know? black um, skin. Sorry, not go on, go on. Forget African and forget I was anything say, else. You know, everything you're saying is exactly yeah. well, 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 like, obviously Spot we're sisters, on. but we're completely different shades. Mm. And I am darker skinned and mm. my mom said that, ex you know, everything you just said, mm -hmm. she's everything she said to me, like <laughs> you're darker than your sisters and you won't really be able to get married. Like no one's going to want you. Mm. Um, so you need to work on your skills of like cooking and cleaning and taking care of the, so, the man. Like, yeah. And I grew up genuinely thinking like, she, always, she also told me like, you know, Allah cursed you with this skin color. Okay. So I genuinely grew up thinking that, but obviously I grew, I grew out of it. Okay, look, may Allah preserve your mom. May Allah bless you. This, this can be not knowing. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Yeah, yeah, uh, but it's but, but and this, is, this, is, this, is, this is a lack of, this, you see all of our issues and problems tie back to Tawheed. Mm -hmm. This is a lack of, lack of tawakkul. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Believe me, sister, I don't care what color you are. If Allah writ, that's the, someone's going to marry you, you're going to get married. Do you get it? So anyone that's watching this, what color you are, how you look, wallahi, 
As long as you observe Allah's laws and legislation, Allah will send somebody to your doorstep. Just understand this. And it seems to me this whole Bengali thing, uh, uh, of, it's, I think it's coming from an older generation where Hindu Hinduism is. It, I think that's the that's culture that like yeah. really makes exactly food. exactly. So really any makes. any any sisters that's watching this who might have a uh, inferiority complex of their looks, their color, uh, their ability, whatever. All I'm going to say is, Wallahi, Allah is the creator of the heavens and the earth. It is not difficult for Allah to find someone for you. Just look at a relationship between you and Allah, being obedient to Him. And given his rights, and wallahi, believe me, Allah will send someone to you and ignore anyone that's making you feel insecure. Yeah, like to, to answer, okay. yeah, so the next question is so, um, I'll let others elaborate on things you spoke about the, the cars and everything here. But from my experience, uh, a few un Islamic practices is when the mahar is discussed, the bride and the groom aren't even in the discussion, mm. it's the elders that discuss it, yeah, uncles, they're uncles. not even consulted. So the bride the and the groom, they're not even consulted, they're not even in the discussion for the mahar. The elders, they discuss the mahar. Normally the dad or the uncle. Yeah, they sit and, then the dad will, and then the, the dad will inform you and her dad will inform her, yeah, this is what we, we, what we agreed. Whereas mm. the sister might be okay with, I don't know, hajj or something like that, but they're not even in the discussion. Yeah. And the other thing I would say is, um, again, it's so bad, but... Um, Land in Bangladesh. That as well. But after the mahar thing, like if you have potential sister-in-laws, brother-in-laws, you're meant to joke with them. Oh my days! Yeah, that yeah, yeah. infuriates so me, bro. Like, yeah. So, but, but again, it's as in it's emphasized. You know, it's, yeah. it's basically this, this, like this is your sorry, yeah. Like this is your like sister-in-law. Like so she'll banter with him, blah blah. Basically, it's just outright flirting. It's proper flirting. Um, so they take his like shoes yeah. and that. Yeah. They're like I've seen I've seen stuff what? on their shoe and run away with it. They'll chase them down, brother. I've seen Holy stuff. Who's, it? who's taking his shoe? Like so the, there's the, 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 the gun laws. take the groom's shoe. His potential sister-in-law, so his, his, his potential wife's sister, they'll have next level banter and that, that kind of behavior, take his shoe. Bro, I've, I've, yeah, yeah. And I've he has to give on, money for the shoe. I've seen stuff on like TikTok, yeah, where they're physically like wrestling and stuff. <laughs> Mental. So crazy. Is, it, is it like, like for in our culture, like, for example, when you go into the bride's house, Somebody locks the door and you need to give money to open the door. Is it like that? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That, that this one well. is a shoe. It's, well. it's, it's sometimes and, it's worse than I would say, as, like, I, as I grew up, I came across a hadith that the in laws are death. Really? Salem said yeah. your brother in law yeah. is like death. Exactly. Yes. Well, I've heard so, so many stories of like Bengalis like um, getting with their like brother in law, sister in law, this and that. It's mental. It's actually crazy. Exactly. That's yeah. because you know, of the free mixing you know, and stuff. You know stuff. how that starts as well? I've got people that I know, friends and stuff, that have done this. They're falling in love with like other. Uh, the other side of the family and stuff because there's flirting stuff going on messaging each other all this tiktok uh, like social media and stuff because what they want to do is they want to record themselves like flirting and stuff and making jokes put on social media bangs views that's it i'd say it's encouraged that is crazy man Look, it just shows us how much co islam and culture and, and and I did see this strongly. Like I'm the like look look. There's look, we're not seeing every single Bengali here, etc. You get it? Yeah. There's like but yeah, like it's 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 saddening. And inshallah, you guys can change this. That's hope. And this generation slowly changes this. Can you tell me about the wedding? I want to know about the 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 proposal, the first time of proposal. Can you guys please run me from? I want to know from A to B because we're running out of time. I, please, yeah, I don't I don't know fully about this, but all I know is. Um, the fish ceremony. Oh my god! Yeah. Do you want to explain uh, it? So basically, uh, that, one's, that one, that one, let's, that's we can get to, I'll okay. go A to B real quick yeah. if you want. Yeah, go ahead. So basically, what it is is like, let's say you set, settled on a spouse, right? You found someone you want to marry. You inform the parents. They'll have like a phone call, and the last one they call a decha mm -hmm. which means a meet sort of thing, where they speak about like mahar, like everything, like when the wedding is, how much gold to give. Then you go with like something called an engagement party, mm -hmm. a few months down the line next year. Mm -hmm. Um, is it? Yeah, Sinifan, Sorry, yeah, Sinifan. And um, and then Sinifan is an engagement party. That's what it is. There's like four different parties you've been it's, it's mad. Then you do a nikah. This is a few days before the marriage. You're usually. leaving something Islamic out. Islamic nikah. You're leaving something out. And then well. you do the... You know, you know what you're leaving out? You the, the, the negotiations. <laughs> that's, that's out the difference. You know the negotiations? You literally negotiate the money, land, yeah, that's, that's, what you're going to give. That's when they see spend, each other. That's, uh, yeah. The Mercedes, you know, this, that, we're going to spend this much minimum in the wedding. The hall has to be this big. Hmm. The f food has to be uh, five so, courses. So that's meal, when both families this, meet, that. basically. They do, do, uh, 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 if if you're not, well. marriage can break. You know, and also one thing... Well, they'll bankrupt. Actually. You can bankrupt yourself. You know, it's actually statistically true, right? The higher maha for a woman is... That's, I think you said this, actually. Yeah. That show that the more you spend on a, on a wedding... Oh, this, is, this is why non-Muslims, by the way. Mm. When Allah and his messenger say it, nobody believes it. Mm. When a kafir, non-Muslim guy comes and says, we've done a study, they go, oh, it's, you see, 
it's unbelievable, bro. Yeah. The insult that we give to Allah is unbelievable. Colonial mindset, brother. Unbelievable. Not the brainwashing that so, we so, have. So, so, okay. So then what do, what do you guys do in the wedding? Like how many dresses does a woman have to wear? What does the guy have to wear? Please tell me a bit more. Of this. I want to know more. The amount of money you guys spend. This one. Um, so, so um, there's like, obviously the wedding, the head, the henna and... It's the Mendy first. The Mendy, Mendy first. Yeah. Mendy party. I, I, I'm, you know not, I'm not going to lie to you. I, I have yeah, no idea. It's, it's because, basically, you know, is when like, I got yeah, married, I just got married in the mosque. Oh. I, I'm, I'm not married anymore. But mm. when I got married, I got married in the mosque. <laughs> and I just did a simple nikah. So That's I don't... Best. I'm not familiar with like all the... Mm. Okay, so tell us. Go ahead. Well, we first start off with negotiations, how much is going to be spent. And then it's Sinifan, which is the engagement. And then after that, we have the Mendi, which is like a hen party. Hindu stuff. It's like a it, it's like like tradition. Where you, do they wear. Head, you apply henna on the no, bride. Do you guys from like rice? Is that from the, is that? Yeah, there is stuff like that. There is stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we do the holy, the, what's it called? Holy wearing yeah, ringers? Yeah. The little dust and all that stuff. Uh, like, a, uh, you know, the platters of yeah, rice. Yeah, yeah, just throw it up in it. Yeah, yeah, I've seen that. That's a very Hindu thing. I've seen that. We love our rice. I've seen that in the henna parties before. We didn't do that in our type of, I haven't seen that. But a lot of so, Hindu stuff goes on, yeah, and you'll be shocked. Just like what? Tell us my father me. stopped going to weddings. My father so, so literally then, uh, upset so many family members mm-hmm. because he couldn't tolerate it no more. He said, "I can't tolerate this. There's no se- segregation. There's no um, it, it, nothing to do with Islam." Mm. So at, at weddings, they'll do like um, musical instruments, like uh, Bollywood music, stuff like that. They do like dances and stuff. The groom and bride will sometimes dance together as well. I've seen that on TikTok. It's crazy. it's crazy, isn't it? Um, so it's proper like Indian. But I have seen a lot of like Bengalis doing just a nikah now in a mosque. Um, you know, it's just easier, isn't it? And financially affordable. So there's like two ways I'm going about, essentially. But you know what? Bengali weddings, I looked at the average, mm. it's 55, 60K on average for a Bengali. That's not including mahar or gold prices, by the way. Bro, if I marry, if I marry and I spend 60 grand, yeah, I'm never divorcing that woman in my life. Yeah, but she'll divorce you, bro. Ever, that's the statistics. Bro. No, 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 but that's that's the, but that's interesting because the thing is, if the mahar is that much, yeah, this is what Islam deals because Islam protects you. Number one, this is, Allah Islam is so beautiful. Allah, alhamdulillah mm. for Islam. Allah, the best thing that ever happened in my life is Islam. Just think about it, yeah. If a man has ill intentions, the fact that he has to speak to the father and give mahar is something that protects you guys, yeah, because you, if he has ill intentions, so. And if the woman has ill intentions, she's a gold digger. It also protects me because if she initiates khula, she has to give me back the mahar or part of the mahar. So you see how Islam protects both sides. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Well, alhamdulillah for Islam. But I okay. Gonna, I was going to mention one thing you guys forgot. You know, um, I've seen this a lot. I've never done it. My mom's always mentioned it. Like she saved up a lot of money just in case for, for that reason. But um, it's uh, the, the fact that the bride's side gives like mahar to the the, the man's like, side like you mean the they buy the furniture yeah, yeah, yeah. i never understood so, so basically that is purely obviously cultural it's islamic yeah, yeah. like yeah. yeah so so this is it happens at my cousin's weddings everywhere so what they do is like the agreement and the negotiations are like this is how much you pay this is how much you pay for the bride's dress etc right and then they'll give like gifts and like they'll pay for the suit for the wedding yeah. etc small stuff like that which islamically it's not encouraged it's not even said to do that is it yeah yeah um this is in Hindu tradition. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, but they're buying like but furniture and everything. With, with, they'll buy like cars and stuff sometimes. But with, with for wedding the for the group, yeah. they exchange prices. My dad prices, bought yeah. car for my sister's husband. <laughs> Oh, that's mad. Yeah. yeah. You know, you know. Uh, don't get any idea. <laughs> <laughs> I was married Bengali sisters. Huh? You, trust me, you can't handle Bengali sisters, man. They're mental, some of them. I'll tell you that much. Um, no, no, I'm joking. I'm joking. Cut that out. But Please I'm cut that out. Because... <laughs> Please but, keep that in. No, no, but, no. Alhamdulillah, listen, do you know why? Don't get you know any why? ideas, guys. My, bro- my, my brother-in-law is a Quran and Hafiz. Mashallah. He's paying for his kids' private Islamic school. So, so Alhamdulillah, my dad saw his qualities and that's why my dad did that. That's what you call a man. Do you understand? That's what you and call he a man. is, the way he's bringing up his kids, Subhanallah, he's a Quran, my Bagna is a Hafiz. Yeah. Um, Quran and Hafiz, he's learning hadiths. Huh? Bagna means nephew. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. My sister's daughter. I thought you mentioned somebody's husband. name. I was like, yeah. Okay. <laughs> sister's uh, son. Yeah. So basically... And while I look at that, look at that. That's at the... why my father saw quality in, in Akhi, here. And that's what you need because when you die, your wedding, your cars, your this is gone. Imagine having a, a, a son-in-law who's encouraging your kids to... Aki, we don't, they don't care about it. Brother, you know my dad. Wallahi, Aki, they don't care. If, if somebody came and said, yeah, they don't even ask him, do you pray? 
What what do you what do what what job do you have? Once How much do you uh, actually, earn? Yeah. But guys, quickly we need to wrap up because we need yeah. to speak about number one, um, uh, marital disputes. How you guys deal with marital disputes? Yeah, I just want to say before my because my brother-in-law will watch this. I'm yes. not. I don't want because I don't want to praise him in front of him. No, you should, my but, son. He's a man. But to be you know what? My on well, my dad's deathbed, my my uh, my uh, dad said to my brother-in-law, "You're the oldest. You look after these lot like an older brother." So he's doing so much. Subhanallah. Without him, bro, I would. I'm the oldest, next oldest. Yeah. He's doing so much for us. It's unbelievable. May Allah bless him. You understand? May Allah bless him and his family. You understand? He did so much. Because, you know, my situation, it, it gave me so much trauma. I literally got off marriage and stuff. You understand? Because, look, without nothing, I got a tag on me. Because in Bengali culture, if you're married and you're finished, you got a tag on you, it's like, look, frowned upon. Mm. I didn't even want to. Yeah, this is the other issue. Brother, I, you stuff. know, yeah, I built a separate house. I didn't want to get into yeah, mortgage. Yeah. I built a separate house in my house, in the garden. I built a separate house so I can have a separate uh, private time. Um, like a guest house. Yeah, like a guest house. So yeah. I don't want to get into mortgage or anything like that. Mm. I planned. Mm. And then this happened. This was this got dropped on me. And my situation it happened so so quick. Like I said, it was done like in within six, seven days and it came, she was here. I didn't even spend one minute with her, literally. And I don't blame her. She's a good girl. Look, mm -hmm. I, I want to make this clear because if they watch this, I one thing I want to say, she's very quiet. She's a good girl. I don't blame her at all. She blames me because uh, she said it to me. She blames me. It's, 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 it's not your fault. It's but I can't explain it to her because yeah. my language and her language, and we don't. She mm. can't. She don't even understand me, yeah. and she blames me. But mm. I just want to say I don't blame her, and it is a qadr of Allah, and uh, I'm sorry what happened. I wish I could go back in time. It's, it's not your fault, actually. and I could uh, yeah. erase this. And it's not your you fault. Know, you know, please, unless it's uh, how do you guys deal with um, marital disputes? So in, in your culture, if there's marital disputes, does the family in laws get involved straight away? Um, does, like, like, how, how does it work? I want to know. Um, from my experience, um, <laughs> again, from what the kids have seen from their parents, they could always be conditions. They have this, I call it bizarre mentality. Like everything has to be with families get involved. Every little thing, you know, family sit down. Um, and unfortunately, I've yet to see a amicable divorce take place where people's true colors come out when divorce take place. So one family wants to diss the other one and uh, spread rumors that, yeah, they were the problem. So uh, again, it's, it's, it's a cultural thing. But don't follow the dean, don't backbite, don't slander. Unfortunately, it gets pretty messy. Really? Yeah. yeah. So, so if you guys have, imagine like a couple, you guys have a marital dispute. Do you get your in-laws involved? Do they get involved? Do they stay away? Because like certain cultures, like the Somali culture, they, the in-laws usually say, listen, just you guys deal with it yourself, etc." So they, they, they discourage, you know, trying to get involved. Is it the same with you guys? No. Tell us, but please. Can you tell us? He gets involved. Like the parents will get involved, the siblings will get involved. It, That's it. Yeah. And it, it's it not does, the siblings, outside families get into, involved as well. It depends on case by case basis. Yeah. Usually with, with Bengali, Bengali culture, depends how bad the dispute is, right? If it's a divorce dis dispute, it usually goes to the parents or the elders of the community. Mm. So like, Village get involved, basically. Yeah, yeah. basically, every, a lot of people get involved. And the problem with that is like, it's always one-sided. Mm. If, you know, let's say I get married, right? And we, I want to divorce my wife. If I tell my parents about it, we have like a little intervention, right? It's going to be one-sided for me, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Saying, oh, she's in the wrong, this and that. Mm -hmm. It's never amicable. This brother's right. I've never seen a Bengali divorce happen like in okay manners. It's, it's always been like... I'd say the yeah, women... I was going to say like, yeah, so um, uh, when, when I was married, uh, yeah. uh, my in-laws weren't involved because my ex-husband was basically an orphan. It was just my mum. And if I, but if I would ever come to her and tell her like, we're having this dispute, she would always blame me. She would say like, what are you doing? Like, are you cooking for him? Are you cleaning? Are you like making sure that he's okay? I'm like, no, like it, it, he's actually in the wrong. Like, but she wouldn't understand that. She, she would be like, just bear it. Just bear it, just tolerate it. Uh, and don't ever let it come to a point of like divorce. Cause what are people gonna say? And, but then I'm telling about I'm miserable. I'm depressed in this marriage. I don't, I don't want to be in this one cause he's, he's not giving me my rights. She's like, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. You've made your choice. Cause I kind of, I married outside of my culture. She, it was like a, it was really difficult. But um, she was like, you, cho you basically chose to marry outside of your culture. You made that decision, so you're gonna have to put up with it. Because if you get a divorce, 
people people are you know people what are people going to say basically yeah, yeah. basically yeah. Um, so it's it really yeah. difficult also, my mom would always always blame me like yeah. you're not doing that's enough this mindset where once you're married him, like, sorry slave, basically. once you're married you're set for life basically and there's kids involved like you're almost like forced to stay that marriage How, however toxic it is and sometimes the elder generation don't understand that it's actually more toxic for the children to witness a toxic relationship yeah so once kids involved it's mm-hmm. like no you got to stay in this marriage for the sake of the kids mm-hmm. you know there is like we, we had a lot of people romantic and we talked about this as well it is good to a certain extent that divorce is not something that is accepted that easily it is good because in today's time divorce happening for the most ridiculous yeah. reasons bro P- crazy so it's good that you have it but i think it's toxic with, 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 it's it become toxic because yes it should be discouraged mm-hmm. you're not getting okay, divorce but it is allowed them it's now you have the other extreme where it's like yeah khalas and you have a little dispute yeah divorce people so, so yeah if people if nowadays like, though like south asians they'll get divorced over the littlest thing you're right there's two extremes where like you know there could be physical abuse abuse involved but the other side like Oh, like he's not giving me what I want, or she's not giving me what I want. Our oh, divorce, that's it. I need something better. The problem in this generation is we have too much options. There's so much options. That's why divorce is so frequent. Do you know what I mean? That's, that's if I can also say, I've yet to see again when I say divorce take place properly, like the proper procedure. There's a reason why Allah's given us three divorce, right? Yes. Mm. So one talaq, have separation, time yeah. to think, give it three, four months, and then more often than not, they both realize that they they miss each other, right? Yeah. Getting didn't remember get married again. But go through the full process. Say you've given your best shot. Usually after the first divorce, halas, that's it, it's over. The guy moves on, but then he realizes he's got feelings for the, for his ex, so on and so forth. Everything's rushed. Nothing's like yeah. taking time. I'll, sorry about that. I'll say one thing as well. I don't think I've come across, it's very rare for me to see like an old generation of Bengalis being happily married. Like it's, that's how bad it is. Like from my personal experience, it might be different, but like generally, the mother and like father, they're not actually in love with each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like it's actually when you think about it, it's crazy, right? Um, this is trauma. But, they, 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 yeah, we see that. We think, trauma. okay, is a marriage like, supposed to be like this? We think this is an example. Is, is this the yeah. example yeah. of like, marriage we're supposed? I'm not going to say who, yeah. like, but like friends and stuff. Like, I've seen like you know, their parents just don't love each other. They care for each other. They do the necessities, but um, got a choice. Yeah, yeah, no, exactly. But, but but what I'm saying is like the old generation, the divorce rates are lower. It's because they tolerate each other. Absolutely. Whereas the younger generation, they know at the same time, they might think they know their worth. So they need to divorce. Do you know what I mean? It's it's tricky because there's right. a... The thing is, I do admire that like to an extent where it's like they are very like... The thing is that we have this attitude there. Like, yes, love should be there. Like nobody should oppress other. But then it's, it's, it's not just about that. There's also mercy. Allah talks about rahmah and rahmah. You know, to one another. You know, you need to understand if the path diminishes, where's the rahmah? So the thing is, there's an ayah in the Quran, Allah talks about this. So it's not, we have this Disneyland Hollywood thing mm, mm. where like it has, it has to be, it doesn't, that's not the reality. And we teach us, we think that this is a reality. Now, this doesn't mean you are harsh to your wife, etc. But it might be a point where you've married for 15, 20 years. Of course, you're going to come and just, you know, every time, yeah, I love you, etc. It, 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 it doesn't happen It should happen But that shouldn't be A reason of divorce yeah, yeah, uh, And yeah. we live at a time I call it the Amazon Prime Flex yeah. Which is I order from Amazon It comes I don't like it I'll send it back And yeah. we carry this attitude To our friends Our uh, uh, family relationships Even our spouses I don't like something I send yeah. you back But I was going to say I Generally I feel like um, I don't know Maybe I'm speaking From like a biased point of view I do feel like women do But like They don't want to in our culture, they don't want to get that divorce because I was like that as well. I didn't want to get divorced, even though I was super like depressed in that marriage. I didn't want to get divorced because I, I was like, oh my God, I'm going to be a divorcee in society. Like, what are people going to say? I'm never going to be able to like stigma, find... Stupid, yeah, yeah. No. so that's why a lot of women like, like yeah. in our culture specifically, stay within the marriage. Uh, even that's in that I, I think generally in a marriage, women are more trapped than men. Right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, men's the they've got the financial sort of yeah, 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 stability yeah. to divorce the woman specifically and, in our culture. Yeah. Speaking in our culture, yeah, yeah, more so than if I can say, bro, I really agree with what you're saying. I think there's two extremes where um, divorce is you know, um, taken too easily, and then at the same time, a lot of tolerance. It's about the, the middle ground. There's a lot of qualities we admire from the other generation. Yes, the yeah. whole thing about it takes a village to raise a, a child, yeah, mm-hmm. that's forgotten. Um, things like you know, tolerance, um, making an effort, giving it time. What has forgotten? It's just like I said, just Amazon thing. In some, yeah. There's it's, good it's, things and yeah. bad things. You know. No, I think I think that's a good plus points and negative points. There is a good you quality. Can move on with the times. Because the thing is, yeah, because statistics show that, and we've known from our dean that women initiate divorce. If it was up to you guys, you guys would divorce us every day. 
يعني that's that's that. I mean, it makes sense because we are like. I exactly. So that's the reason why I think the, the, the dynamic kind of works. I'm not talking about the toxic level, but the dynamic of divorce being frowned works in a sense where, and this is what Gabriel Romani said, which I agree to a certain point. Not that if you're in an abusive marriage where the guy is hitting you, not giving you rights, that's a different. Islam is giving you a right to get divorced. However, we're living at a time where people are initiating divorce for the most ridiculous reasons. So that stigma is good from that perspective that uh, the, the, the fact that it's frowned upon and that you guys need to think okay. about it yes yeah. because if you guys are more prone to initiate it it's good that you have some sort of a concern of if i do but not to the level where you're abused and your rights are violated that you stay in i'm not talking about that it makes you i think it keeps women females in check in that aspect I because that is your weakness you're i get you know what, what you're trying to say I get what you're so saying. I, I kind of, uh, yeah. I get what you're saying, but there's also, it comes down to emotional intelligence on the woman's part. Um, like, sorry, I lost my chain of talk. You were going to say something. No, it's, it's okay. I, I have to say, Mrs. Adon. Like, sometimes <laughs> I, I can remember I went to a talk once, but like, it, I literally went blank and I was looking at, I was yeah, looking at everyone. So many and I didn't know what, I didn't know, I, I said, guys, I'm sorry, I don't know, what, I don't know what I'm talking about. I, I totally forgot everything. <laughs> so it happens. But one thing, one thing that I'll, uh, I'll recommend everybody here is, well, do your FKR thing. Do your morning and evening FKR. I'm telling you, yeah, because I never used to do it. And uh, shaitan attacks in different ways, yeah? So if you remember, let us know, sister, inshallah. Yeah? And it's totally normal. Trust me, it happened, it happened to Mike. Remember Mike? Yeah, Mike was here as it happened. So it's, it's totally normal. <laughs> Quickly say it. Right now. Because we're going we're to end in about a you couple know, of minutes. We've got to, uh, basically, what I want to say is, my mom, when I know what she did for me. I know she had all the good intentions in the world. Yeah. She did not do this to like hurt me or anything like that. I know that. She did it for my benefit. I don't blame her uh, like that at all. Um, I know she blames me because for ending it, but I know inside my mom did this for me. She thought it would be. She thought she knew what is best for me, not not I. What, what I know what is best for I. She didn't. I don't know why she didn't let me choose. Do you understand? Mm. She she said you had, you had enough time, so that's it. It's like I had an expiration date. You're getting old. Uh, no one's going to accept you. You're the oldest in the family and things like that. So basically, I know I'm going back a little bit because, I, because look, if my mom sees this, I want her to know clearly. Mm. I know she did this for my benefit no, no, I know. and I don't blame I her. I know, I know. I don't blame her. But, and yeah. Uh, yeah, you know the situation. I know, but I know how much you love your mom. Trust yeah. me, auntie. Yeah, he's me. been yeah. in the house. He knows my mom. My dad has been to my dad's janazah. He knows everything. So... He knows anyway. Yeah. Okay, guys, we need to wrap up uh, because we was going to talk about the divorce. We talked about divorce, how it's initiated. Yeah. Um, and uh, just in a nutshell, um, when it comes to divorce, you guys just what two families talk and khalas. And it, did, what do they, is there anything that we're missing in the culture that they implement? Because they were talking about, oh, you have to give us this land or that land. Is that, is that what happens in divorces? So, so, you, so you can't get divorced until you give some kind of money or land. Yes. Why is this a bank, bruv? La, la, la. I would, always say, money. I would say specifically with divorces, the land has to be split. That's not common, is it? So let's say if I marry a wife, marry someone, right? And um, let's say uh, some land has been passed down from my dad to me. When I'm divorcing um, that person, I don't have to give her a land, right? What's the Bengali approach? I don't think you'd have to. I don't think you'd have to give it, but she will ask for it. Right, I see. Yeah. Would you say that's a, 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 a common issue? Is that a common issue? <laughs> oh, right. Okay. Yeah. I've never experienced it. Family member of mine has actually experienced that. Yeah. Okay, I think any last uh, words we need to wrap up. Oh, just quickly, like you know, all these like discussions of relationships, divorce, and stuff. No one speaks about the ultimate goal, Jannah. So, exactly. and it's just like, you know, my rights, his rights. Yes. This life is short, man. Like, mm -hmm. you know, have a bit of tolerance, get through it. Unless, as you said, it's a really bad, abusive relationship, fine, you know, get people involved in and go your separate ways. But no one speaks about the ultimate goal. And because the lack of that, yes. it's like, get, get up and leave. Like, but, yeah, that's, that's the thing, bro. Like the Prophet said, nations will come together. And why? Because Allah will take the fear out of the enemies from their heart and put the, the love of the dunya. And that's what it is, bro. How many people are driven of Jannah? We're gonna, we want to enter Jannah. That's not even a factor. And when that's not a factor, bro, if you don't have Akhir as your goal, your goal is going to be what? Dunya. Your calculations and decisions are going to be based on the dunya. I just so, remembered what I was so, going to say. Sorry? I you, just remembered what I was going to say. Let's go. Let's, yeah. So I was, I was talking, you, you was talking, because I've seen you mention it on your podcast a lot, where uh, you were saying statistics say that women are more likely to divorce, divorce, yeah. divorce the husband. And I get where you're coming from, because uh, from the point of the fact that we are emotional being, but I was also going to say it, it's, it comes down to like emotional intelligence on the a woman's yeah. part. Like, let's say your husband's done something to upset you, 
you talk to yourself like what am I upset about is this necessary is it necessary for me to like you know blow it out of proportion so it's down to the woman and yeah I was gonna say also marriage is is it's not based on love it's based on a commitment just like salah Sometimes we don't feel our salah. Exactly. Sometimes we yeah. don't feel that connection with Allah. But we continue to pray uh, because we make that commitment to exactly. Allah. And it's like that in your marriage. Exactly. You, like if I had to like compare it to a relationship, it's me, me and my sister. Like we we have arguments and disputes here and there. But we always come together and we, you know, we saw it out. And we make that commitment to each other that no matter what the situation is, whether we argue, whether we we've said something to hurt somebody uh, either either of us we come together and we solve it because i'm committed to you regardless of um regardless of whatever and it's the same with any relationship in your life whether that's marriage or your relationship with your family or your sister specifically also a with if it is a relationship with allah you're committed it doesn't matter if you don't feel it you're committed exactly. and that's what that's what it is it's it's you know um you want to say something yeah, just, just some quickly, guys. Enough, yeah, I was just gonna say. I think I've seen too many times in this like generation, people think love is everything. Love isn't everything. Yeah. Just because you love a girl or a it's guy, we, if they're not practicing, what does it matter? Love isn't anything. Like, we grew up watching not, a lot of Bollywood that's what movies. I'm saying. So even even now, even now, like the whole thing we see in social media is like, oh, like you know, love is the most important thing. Everything else can be worked on. Most important thing is finding someone who's practicing or at least wants to practice. Love is a secondary thing compared to everything else. Uh, forget about how rich that person is. Yeah. It's about what they have in their heart for Islam. You know, that's what I go based off. You know. Let's I feel like eventually okay. love grows anyway throughout the marriage. Yeah, yeah, it's true, exactly. it's true. Look, as long as there's not hatred, yeah. And the, yeah. The, what you define is love. What, what the hell is love? I come home with bloody balloons and flowers every day. What, no, what, love what is, is not always just like but that's grand what I'm gestures. See, that's what I'm saying. What is it? Like, for example, nobody knows. Nobody can even put... They're, they're chasing something they don't know what it is. There has to be sacrifice, like looking after, you know, like the Prophet said, uh, said, the one who looks after two daughters and brings them up, etc. Where is the aim of doing that? I'm, I'm, I don't love her. Therefore, I'm going to leave her. Actually, the whole dynamic of the marriage, her, your kids. Are you kidding me? You're going to leave her because of, oh, I don't love her anymore. Mm. Social you know? media as well. It's crazy. Yeah. Actually, yeah. It's, a lot of it's comparison. Social media it couples is, we're yeah. going to end on this, inshallah. Good parts. Yeah. And the negative parts. Yeah, yeah we, talk, we talked about that. Irresponsible yeah. social media couples. We've, one, done a, we've done a video about this. Can I add one last thing? Quickly, sister, please. I think the root cause of majority divorces is you're not educating these young men and women about how a marriage works. You're yeah, not yeah. educating both genders exactly. that you're both Modern. complete. Don't worry, sister. That's the reason why yeah, yeah. I'm I'm working on an app because of this. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is my witness. Wallahi al-Azim, though. Like, the reason, because you know why? Because people do not know the dynamics. The reason, you know, this show has helped me so much in my marriage. Because I understand from a female's perspective. And I'm like, wow, I never, I've been doing something wrong in my house. Mm. And I incorporate and change that, bro. It helps me. And, and inshallah, you guys at home, it helps you. And the aim is that we want to help people into the marriage seeking process and marriage itself because we don't understand each other's dynamics. They're a whole different That's being. That's why we have We're a whole different being. Feminism. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so inshallah, brothers and sisters, our aim with this show is exactly this. We don't want marriages to end. We want marriages to work, inshallah. Uh, divorce is, of course, halal. But it comes with consequences. So, inshallah, it helps you guys at home. Uh, like I learned so many things about the Bengali culture. And like we said before, we're not saying every single Bengali is like this. The Bengali culture as a whole. But there's a lot of things to be working. It shows the lack of Tawheed. Us going back to Islam. And that's it, brothers and sisters. May Allah bless our Bengali brothers and sisters for coming here. I've learned a lot. And may Allah bless you guys at home, inshallah. Till next time. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brothers and sisters, just imagine for a second that you give £10 in donation and that £10 is used to buy food or bricks or whatever to help the people in Gaza. But then just imagine this amazing deed that you want to do, but we turn it into a money-making machine. How? The waqf is exactly that. They take your money and the money that we are going to put in, in this waqf, this building, and every single time the money generated from that waqf, that building, is going to go to our Palestinian brothers and sisters for the next 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 100, 150 years. And this will be a form of true Sadaqah Jariyah. I myself will be donating for that, inshallah. Click the link below and donate. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless and preserve you guys. We will together, inshallah, see the day when Palestine will be free. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.